Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. A couple of notes today from the last practice in Oxnard in pads. That's it, guys. That's a wrap on padded practice. They'll do a walkthrough tomorrow uh, before they go ahead and go down to uh, L.A. to play the uh, Chargers, and then they will be back in Dallas. That's it, training camp, Oxnard, which they stayed in Oxnard longer than they usually do, uh, which I think is actually good for them. You know, and, and maybe I've been looking at things a little bit differently with um, what's happening with the Cowboys, where training camp is more of a exclusive event, kind of like what uh, – uh, YouTube TV is trying to do with direct TV, excuse me, with Sunday ticket, um, where they're giving you all different kind of angles where you can customize it and so on. And then that way the NFL can justify it being a premium thing. But it feels like the Cowboys are trying to get away from the business of, um, mass fans watching practice. So if you're going to be there, it's going to cost you a bit. And maybe that'll be more of a focus on actually practicing and playing and performing on the field than being the, the uh, you know, the, the zoo that is the Dallas Cowboys to come see the animals, so to speak. But today, you know, the players, their intensity level was up. A um, little concern. Overshone was not practicing today. He was actually working on the bands, and the bands usually mean the bands of injury, I should say, because if you got a sore groin or a sore hamstring or, uh, you know, plantar fasciitis, you're usually working out on the bands to get you some work on it. So I hope there's nothing to that. But here's what we have. We, we, there's no, I, I don't have a video outlook of this, but this is what supposedly happened. The Dallas Cowboys are one step closer to making their North Texas return. This is from the Dallas Morning News. Their final padded practice in Oxnard was an interesting one, particularly because of the intensity levels kicked up towards the end. Wednesday practice also included an early exit for rookie first-rounder Tyler Guyton. Guyton, we're told, is okay, but um, Redman and um, Asim Richardson um, got extra work at tackle, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So, um, Jake Ferguson caught a pass and had a stiff arm on Donovan Wilson. It upset Wilson, who jumped in his face. Okay, so, you know, here it is. Jake Ferguson gets a nice cat, catch. He stiffed on him. Boom. Right? And so, Donovan Wilson got in the face, and that's when Jake Ferguson punched him on the shoulder. And that got the party started, and, of course, everybody jumped in. Then... On the next play, Osa Indigazua sacked Dak Prescott as the defensive player started yelling. So, on the Malik Davis run, um, he got stiff, uh, got a, got into a stiff a tiff with a few offensive linemen. When one of the defensive line, excuse me, the defensive end got uh, in a tiff with the offensive lineman, he went to the ground with a few players on both the offense and defense converging on the scene. With everybody yelling and screaming, Royce Freeman scored in the red zone. Trey Lance connected on a TD pass to Ryan Fontenroy, um, which fired up the offense. So it was a good, spirited practice. And probably what, what guys are thinking is, this is it, man. This is the last, man, you, you, you know, when you were training camp, okay? Now, we did something in high school that not too many teams did. We ended up going away for training camp, Madison High School. We went to Randolph-Macon Military Academy in Front Royal, Virginia. And if you've seen the movie, Remember the Titans, okay? You saw the Titans, which actually was right around the corner. Well, not around the corner, but about 15 miles, 15, 20 miles from my high school um, in Northern Virginia. The Titans, you saw them going, of course, to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to train. We ended up going to Randolph-Macon. And when you have those two-a-day practices for a week, and you have the special team padded practice in between, you get to that last practice and know that it's over. Oh, my God. You're, you're like, oh, you're just like, you, you, know, you, you get that boost of energy, and you're excited about leaving. And, yeah, 
I can see that happening because everybody's like, yeah, man, we out of this mother helper, man. I'm going back to Dallas. I'm going to be sleeping in my own bed. I'm going to be able to hang out with my regular spots and everything else. I'm going to get back to life and back to reality. So, yeah, I can see the excitement. But, you know, we've had, I, I think we've had a really good camp. Um, you didn't like losing Sam Williams, of course, but... We found some really nice players, diamonds in the rough, and um, I think we're going to be a good team. I'm going to say, regardless of what the Joneses have done, um, as far as you know, getting player signed, um, getting player signed. Yeah, we haven't done any of that, have we? Regardless of what the Joneses have done, that has nothing to do with the guys that are down on the field that absolutely positively are giving everything. Um, Micah Parsons, with all the goals that he has, he's got some lofty expectations. And I can guarantee you, he's looking at this and saying, yeah, I get NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Jerry Jones, you're going to pay me so much money. Oh, it's going to be so much money. You know, it, it'll be basically just give them a piece of the team, part ownership of the team. That's basically that's what they need. Maybe that's what you should do with Dak. Dak, here, you know, take 5%. Okay. Cool. Be that as it may, the players out there have put in a lot of really hard work, and I think you're going to see paying dividends on it. I was listening to the Mike McCarthy press conference and, you know, for a guy who doesn't have a contract passed this year, he sure seems to be confident and doesn't seem to be feeling any pressure. When he talks about the, um, just for example, the protections, you know, he's like, you know, we're so far away ahead of where we were this time last year with, you know, just being able to call out the different protections and things that I believe, and this is where, on Dan Leo show, they, they you know they just clown the fuck out of me. Excuse my language, clown the hell out of me. Um, when I say that this team is going to be a lot better on offense because of um, the fact of being in the system for another year, and and Philly's whole thing is joking, of course. You got no running back. It's like yeah, but guess what, buddy? We were 14th in the NFL running the football. We were average, but yet. We were number one in scoring with a bad running game. So I don't know how much worse it might be. I see Rico carrying the ball more, getting more touches. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, um, as long as he can stay healthy. But I see the running back by committee being capable enough, especially if you have Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe, you know, literally road paving guys. I mean, just, just road pavers, just, just bulldozing everything out the way. So there you have it. They fighting in Oxnard, literally, after the place off the roof almost burned off the sucker. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you. Peace.